Hey guys, what's up? This is Eben, and today I'm going to be walking you through the basics of digital painting that you need to know as a traditional painter. I've had a lot of people asking what they need to start digital painting if they have a traditional painting background. So in this video, I'm just going to briefly go over the bare minimum functions you need to be aware of as a traditional painter going into the digital painting medium. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel below. I release new videos like this every Wednesday, and I do a live stream every Sunday, so you can always hop in there and join and ask any questions you have. And of course, leave a comment if you have any requests for future content from this channel. All right, let's go to Photoshop here. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna see when you open up Photoshop and you hit Create New over here is you probably won't have any of these uh, templates here, but what you want to focus on here is your uh, canvas dimensions and orientation. So if you're coming from a traditional painting background, this may seem like a lot of information. Don't worry about all this stuff down here. Uh, what you need to worry about is your width and height, either in pixels or in inches. Now, if you're a traditional painter, you may be more used to thinking about things in terms of inches. So you can always uh, set your canvas dimensions according to that. If you are more familiar with inches, that's fine. Just, you know, you can even measure it out with a ruler. You can start with something like 24 uh, by 18 inches. And then the key with that is you want to make sure your resolution or your DPI is high enough. So 72 for 24 by 18 is fairly low. And why this is going to matter is the higher your resolution, the higher quality your image will be but the lower the performance of your brushes will be. And of course, that'll depend upon the kind of machine you're working on. But uh, for the most part, no matter what computer you're working on, uh, at a really high resolution, your brushes are going to lag quite a bit. So you want to find that sweet spot between a high enough resolution that your, your end result is going to look good and a low enough resolution where you're not going to run into performance issues. So at 24 by 18 inches, 300 dpi is pretty good, but this is kind of why I prefer to do it in pixels because uh, For example, if you're doing like 6 by 8 inches uh, 300 dpi is is not going to um, it's not going to be as much it, Essentially your overall resolution is going to be much lower uh, Even though your dpi is the same so I prefer to do it by pixels and for a typical piece, I like to do greater than 3,000 pixels on my smallest side. Uh, and that will depend upon what I'm doing, if I'm just doing a sketch or if I am doing something that I know will be a higher quality print. But let's just start out with something like 5,000 by 3,000. And of course, this is also going to affect your aspect ratio, which is another thing to consider. But honestly, at this point, don't worry about it too much. You can just go in, make sure you have a canvas. From there, you can always mess around with things and change your resolution and your aspect ratio and everything later on. So, uh, starting out here, we have our blank canvas. And basically, I want to make sure that you have a, a simplified approach that you can use to traditional painting on a digital medium. So. Uh, that really means in a lot of cases sort of ruling out a lot of things you don't need to worry about as well as the tools that you do need to worry about. So from here, if you want to continue messing around with your canvas size or dimensions, you can hit C or go to your crop tool. And that will bring up these edges here. You just click on that and you can drag and adjust your canvas to whatever dimensions you want. This will change your resolution as well as your aspect ratio. So if you are a traditional painter that wants to know what your canvas size is before you start, you can go ahead and hit enter and change that to whatever size you want. Also notice that down here in the corner, it's going to show you your uh, whole canvas uh, dimensions in pixels. And of course you can check that if uh, you are using inches as well, it'll tell you that as well as your DPI or your PPI as it says here. So when I want to simplify my painting approach in Photoshop, I'm really only thinking about four major tools. I'm thinking about my brush, my mixer brush, and or uh, my smudge tool, and my mixer brush, as well as my eraser. So if you can narrow down your process to those four tools, then 
it'll really simplify a lot of things for you. The other thing you're going to want to think about is your layers. So this is also completely optional. If you don't want to think about this, if you don't want to incorporate this into your technique, you don't have to. But I'm going to quickly show you how you can in case you want to utilize this digital trick here. So what I usually do at the start of a piece is I'll create a new layer with Control shift n and you can name it if you want. It's really helpful to keep track of these sometimes, but for now I'll just keep it as layer one. Don't worry about this, just hit OK. So you can see down here in the corner, I now have two layers. I have my background layer and I have my layer one. So on layer one, uh, this is where you can paint whatever you want and uh, you can turn that on and off. Everything you do on this layer will stay on this layer. And the reason that's helpful is because you can go back and forth if you want between different layers and work on them independently. This is why one of the, the major ways that digital painting is different from traditional painting is that you have this, this constant option to sort of reverse back to an earlier stage or to make what they call non-destructive edits, which is essentially being able to paint over something and test an area, but then being able to revert back or, or paint without modifying another area of your, your painting. So uh, that's totally up to you if you want to utilize that function. Personally, I prefer to keep things simple and work with between one to three layers, sometimes just one, even at a, on a very detailed piece. And that's just because I come from a traditional painting background. I like to keep things simple, and I think it helps to, to keep me accountable for what I'm doing. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to think about is your brushes and your brush menu. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and created a whole pack of brushes specifically for the traditional painter in mind when it comes to digital painting. It's simple, it only has a select uh, number of, of well-refined brushes that will help you sort of emulate your uh, traditional style painting in the digital medium. So you can check that out in the link below and I'm just going to run through quickly what you can do with some of these. So uh, if you're just starting out here, you have your drawing tablet or you have your mouse. If you don't have a drawing tablet, highly recommend you get one. Um, I've included some selections of uh, really cheap drawing tablets you can buy uh, if you would like to below in the, uh, the link there. Uh, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. There's some really great cheap ones out there, but it's going to be way easier than trying to do this with a mouse. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to right click by default or on your pen that'll be one button or on your mouse it'll be right click and that'll bring up your brush menu here. So once you've downloaded the brush pack, you'll be able to look at all the options here. These are all the, the brushes in my pack here. And so uh, a lot of your sort of more traditional style painterly brushes are sort of right here around the middle. And uh, this one is sort of opaque and has a bit of grittiness to it. And uh, some of these other ones, such as the, the wet brushes here, have a mixer brush quality. These are going to get you the closest to your sort of traditional uh, painterly style brushes. And as you can see, because I'm working at a pretty high resolution here, it's a bit slow. Uh, but that, uh, that lag is reduced as you zoom in further and use a smaller uh, version of that brush. By the way, I've set up things over here uh, for, for my uh, specific workflow. I try to keep it very simple. I have, my, I have my layers at the bottom, I have my color picker in the middle, and I have my navigator at the top. Anything else you see over here, you can just X out of. You can go to these little bars here, just hit close tab group. If none of these are showing up for you, you can go to window and find them here. I have the navigator, I have layers, and I have color. And that's all I really use. And another thing you can do if you want to really hone in and focus on what you're doing, you can hit F and that will uh, put Photoshop in this kind of focus view mode. And from here, you can sort of work without worrying about anything else that's going on on your computer. So what I'm also, I've also been doing here is just sort of moving the canvas around and I want to make sure you know how to do that as well. And I apologize if you're already very familiar with this, but um, if you're just coming into digital painting, this is going to save you a lot of time. Uh, so I've hotkeyed zoom to uh, Z, I think it is by that by default. And I always make sure I have scrubby, scrubby zoom checked up here. And that allows me to hold down with my pen and move back and forth on the canvas as I'm working. And that's a, just a really effective way for me to zoom 
uh, in and out of a piece. And this is important because you are limited to the size of your monitor. Unlike with traditional painting, you can have a huge canvas and step way back and look at it. This sort of mimics that effect uh, on your monitor so you can zoom in and out, you can do very detailed parts and then pull way back and look at it as a whole. Uh, also by default, you can use space. You'll see a little hand pop up here and you can move your canvas around if it ever gets stuck off in a corner like that. <laughs> okay, so as you've seen already, there are two main brush types. There's the regular brush tool and there's the mixer brush. And what I've done with this brush pack is I've actually created separate brushes for each of those. You can see that there's a little droplet next to these ones that happen to be mixers. This is a very specific type of mixer I've created called the, uh, the remixer, which sort of helps you blend things together on your canvas. But if uh, you are using these brushes, you can also switch between them based on hotkeys. And what I like to do is I brush is hotkeyed to B by default, but I've also hotkeyed the mixer brush separately to A. And that's because I like to switch between these as I work, kind of to mimic a, a wet and dry brush technique. And if you want to change any hotkeys yourself, you can go to edit, you can go to sh uh, keyboard shortcuts here, and then you can find the specific tool. If you go to shortcuts and then tools, you'll see all your different tools here. You can find your mixer brush right here, and I think that'll be under B by default, and you can just change that to A. Another thing that I'll be showing you in a second is the smudge tool, which is sort of similar to the mixer brush tool, but it doesn't actually put paint on your canvas. So as you can see here, I've also hotkeyed to that to S. And so what I do is I'm switching between those throughout my workflow. And you can see here, I'll show you an example. The smudge tool will have its own uh, tool tip, which you can change in your brush settings menu, which uh, you don't have to worry about too much otherwise at this point, because I've went ahead and created all these brushes for you. But um, you can go into your brush settings here and change the tip of your uh, smudge tool. But I usually don't change it much. I'll find one that I like and I'll keep it there. It will stay there by default. And what the smudge tool does, as you can see, is it smudges things. Um, you can change the strength of your smudge tool up here. I usually just keep it as 100. I kind of like to use this for small detailing things. Like if I want to make something wispy or have some, uh, even for creating like tree branches or hair or anything like that, it can be very useful or just for pushing paint around. I mean, at maximum strength, it will grab paint and it will push it around quite a bit. But notice it doesn't do anything where paint hasn't already been applied to the canvas. So our the final tool we want to really be thinking about here, which you may not even need to use at all if you're just a straight traditional painter and you're used to working this way, is our eraser. And it's mostly helpful for me when I am working on different layers because when you erase from a layer that is over a another layer, you can see it will cut away from that layer. And I like to use this when I am using multiple layers. I've actually included a few different eraser types in this brush pack. So if you don't even have to worry about going to the hotkey, you can just pick up your brush menu and select one of these different erasers and it will automatically switch to the eraser tool. Uh, but I have a few different types for different applications. This one I find is super useful, the pointy eraser. It has a tapered tip that will change with pressure, so you can use it to create some nice crisp silhouettes or correct any blemishes or anything you want from your shape. Um, and I've also included a soft eraser, which can be useful for creating gradients and that kind of thing. And the square eraser, which can be nice for creating some uh, solid boundaries as well. So of course, if you are a traditional painter, you're not used to this and you may not even want to take advantage of this at all, but you do have the option to undo any action you have. And you can actually set the number of times, the number of actions Photoshop will remember with this function, but it's usually not necessary to change that. If you've just made one simple mistake, you can hit Control Z and go back any number of times to, uh, to undo that action. And you can also use, I've changed it to Control alt z which works better for me, uh, but I think by default it's Control uh, shift z to redo an action. Of course, all of that is up here under the edit menu if you forget those hotkeys. But 
Other than that, there really isn't much you need to know. Of course, there are all kinds of different uh, nuances and uh, so many different features available in Photoshop, but I don't want to, to sort of bog you down with all of that right now. And really what you need to know as a traditional painter going in just to get started here are these basic functions. So if you are a traditional painter and you're just starting out with digital painting and you're not really sure how to start, these are really the basic tools that you need to, to get going here. And of course you'll learn more. There's so many incredible tools available on Photoshop. Uh, it's really unlimited what you can do here, but I feel like personally uh, the issue isn't that there aren't those tools available, it's that sometimes it just seems over so overwhelming uh, to try to engage with them all and try to get results out of all of them. So I hope this is helpful and if you're interested in learning uh, any of the other basic functions of Photoshop, feel free to leave a comment and let me know and I'd be happy to do another video about them. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy your, uh, your debut into digital painting, and I hope it's frustration-free and just as enjoyable as it is for me. Uh, it's a really an incredible medium, and it, and it offers a lot of opportunities to, to grow and to uh, create more efficiency and have some fun with your art. Um, but you'll see here, if you follow these techniques and you just stick to these basic tools, you'll find it, uh, it can be very similar to your traditional painting style. So once again, you can find these brushes in the link below. You can also check out some of my selections for really cheap drawing tablets if you don't have one already. And of course, you can find more resources about this kind of stuff at my website, which you can check out below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you can see more stuff like this coming out. I release a new video every Wednesday and I do live streams on Sundays. So I hope this is helpful for you guys and uh, take care.